works because we've done this without taking a dime of PAC money over the last five years. All people, wherever they are, making sure that everyone's in and everyone counts. All right. Uh, Mr. O'Rourke, you've been a hot topic on the show. Um, you did a Vanity Fair cover to announce your campaign, and you said you were, quote, born to be in it. You went across the country alone on a road trip after you lost your election, and you said you, quote, sometimes help raise your kids. These are things in my mind that a female candidate wouldn't be able to get away with. Do you think you can get away with more because you're a man? And do you have any regrets about launching on the cover of Vanity Fair? You're right. Um, there are things that I have been privileged to do in my life that, that others cannot. Um, and, and I think the more that I travel and listen to people and learn from them, the clearer that comes becomes to me. Um, when women in this country are, are paid 80 cents on the dollar that a man makes, African-American women, 61 cents, Latinas, 53 cents. When you have 10 times the wealth in white America than you do in black America, when you have the largest prison population on the face of the planet, and it's disproportionately comprised of people of color, uh, the systematic foundational discrimination that we have in this country, in, in every aspect of life, is something that I have not experienced in my lifetime. And I've had advantages that others could not enjoy. So being aware of that, um, and then doing everything in my power to help correct that, working with others, ratifying the Equal Rights Amendment, for example, so that it is beyond the shadow of a doubt that, that women will be treated equally in this country. Um, staring in the face the legacy of, of slavery and segregation and Jim Crow and continued suppression in our economy, in our democracy, in our system of justice, it's the only way that you begin the work of repair and stop visiting those injustices on the generations that follow. So, yes, we have our work cut out for us in this country. I have my work cut out for me to, to be a better per person and ensure that I'm more mindful uh, to the experiences that others have had different than the experiences so that I've had. You're you Vanity Fair cover. Are those mistakes? Would you say those are mistakes? Being on the cover of Vanity Fair? Yeah, so, so make it... looks it, elitist? What? What's yeah, it? yeah. I, I think it, it reinforces that, that perception of privilege. And that headline that said I was, I was born to, mm. to be in this, I in the articles attempting to say that, that I felt that my calling was in public service. No one is born to be president of the United States of America, uh -huh. uh, least of all me. Um, so, so, um, and yeah. What about I, the part-time dad thing? Yeah, so, so you listen. You got some flack for that one. <laughs> absolutely, and I deserved it. Uh, yeah, that's what did your wife say? I'm sure your wife wasn't so, thrilled. So she, so listen, in, in, <laughs> in, in a real ham-handed way, I was trying to acknowledge that, that she has a lion's share of the responsibility during this campaign. As most women do. That's right. Mm -hmm. and, and not only does, does she work, um, she is the principal caregiver to, to our kids, right. uh, is, is supporting me, campaigns with me as she just did in New Hampshire this, this last weekend, and, and trying to acknowledge that by saying she's raising our kids sometimes with my help. I called Amy after I got that criticism. I said, um, tell me, am, am I saying this wrong? She said, I know what you're trying to say. <laughs> and I really appreciate where you're coming from. Uh, but the way in which you said it uh, sounds flip. Yeah. It, it minimizes what I'm doing and, frankly, what a lot of other women in this country are doing. So you, you need to rethink this okay. and, and say this differently. Right. So, listen, um, I, I have a lot to learn and, and still am. She was, uh, and I'm learning she said from the that best. very nicely. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Honey, nicer than she would. Right, right. Well, let me ask you one more thing before we go to sure. You're not married to Megan and Scott. No, no. Yeah. So, so, you know, Trump has and come up with a nickname for you yet. Oh, yeah, he, he will. does. Crazy Hands. He calls them Crazy Hands. Oh, Crazy Hands. hands. Right. Oh, that's nothing. What is yeah. that? Yeah. That's yeah. nothing. But, you know, he will, he'll get worse. Yeah. He's a nasty, nasty man. Right. Are you going to go down a, deep with him, or are you going to go on that level, or are you going to rise above it? Listen. And they go low. Do you go high, or do you get high? What is it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Do you use your hands more? What, what, what do you is do? It? To be clear, no to the last question okay. that, you, that you asked. All right. All right. Uh, but listen. Um, Not that there's anything wrong with it anymore. No. Yeah. Ca calling, <laughs> calling Mexican immigrants, rapists and criminals, asylum seekers and infestation, mm -hmm. Klansmen and Nazis, very fine people, conflating uh, Elon Omar, duly elected Muslim representative from Minnesota with the attackers of 9-11. Not only does this stuff offend our sensibilities and sound un-American, but it's, it's changing this country. Hate crimes on the rise mm -hmm. every one of the last three years. The day that he signs his, his Muslim ban in 2017, the mosque in Victoria, Texas, burned to the ground. Mm -hmm. so, so we cannot 
descend in, into more of that division and bitterness and hatred and racism that so defines that man and his presidency. We've got to elevate this conversation around our ambitions, the service and the sacrifice. Okay, okay, okay. Right. What nickname right. would you give him? And, uh, yeah. we, 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 <laughs> wait, hold on. Yeah. Don't answer anymore. Don't say another thing. <laughs>